What's up? It's Rachel Wolfson here. Thanks again for joining us for another very special AMA today. Today I'm here with Ilya Volkov. He is the CEO of UHodler. Hey, Ilya, how's it going? Hi, Good Rachel. Hi, you. guys. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Good to see you too. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here, Ilya. Before we get started, I want to remind the audience please drop your questions in the chat below. Ilya is here to answer those for you. And yeah, let's just get get started. Um, Ilya, first off, how about you start by explaining what uHodler is and how it's different from other platforms like BlockFi and Celsius? Such a big Such question. A big I, I, I can consume the entire time of our stream, like 40 minutes, just answering this question. But okay, let's, let's be straightforward. So uHodler is a platform with... Uh, all major features uh, that help people, uh, normal people like you and I, to unlock all the benefits of crypto in the easy, uh, secure way. So we have um, wallets with integrated uh, crypto rewards or crypto, crypto saving accounts. We have exchange services from fiat to crypto, from crypto to crypto. So we have lending and we have trading. And actually, we are very different to many other crypto companies, uh, like you mentioned, Celsius and BlockFi, because uh, so first of all, we are not ICO backed. Uh, we are not uh, VC backed, so we are not burning uh, VC money. So we're self-efficient. So we have started like a crypto backed lending company, like uh, many other um, service providers. But again, nowadays we have much uh, uh, better um, product portfolio. So. Also, we are very different in terms of uh, business model in general. I think we'll speak more about, about that topic today, uh, but just briefly. So uh, many other companies, crypto companies are operating or operated like a crypto hedge funds, uh, meaning they, they, they are taking customer funds and then placing them uh, under a third party yeah. um, uh, service providers, financial institutions, uh, DeFi protocols, whatever. So we are self-efficient. So everything is based on our own services, on our on our uh, products and services. So uh, again, long story short. So uh, we are uh, a fintech company with a number of crypto to fiat services, uh, not uh, ICO backed, no any token related to to Uhodler. And um, maybe just to uh, sum up, I have some nice analogy for you, Rachel, if you don't mind. So uh, we all know companies like uh, you, you just mentioned, like BlockFi or Celsius or uh, Crypto.com. So just think that they are here. And on the other side, we all know companies like, let's say, uh, Robinhood uh, or ChargeFob. So we are like in the middle. So here are uh, crypto companies. Here are traditional trading companies. We are in the middle, but we are crypto native. Got it. Wonderful. Well, I think that sums it up really nicely, Ilya. We've got a ton of questions coming in from the audience, but before I take those, and I will take those soon, um, obviously what's on everybody's mind right now in the crypto industry is it's crypto winter. We're in a bear market. How is that impacting you, Hodler? Uh, look, first of all, uh, I think we all understand that that uh, uh, the, the term winter is not about just just crypto market, right? So we are at the beginning or at the active phase of another crisis, another recession, you know, another downturn. And the real reason for all the events uh, nowadays um, uh, is in high inflation rates, uh, in uh, fat raising key rates. Uh, so basically the main reason in, in the economy uh, in general and a lot of different microeconomic factors. So, uh, but as for as for crypto, of course, crypto just following the traditional market, and of course, uh, everyone affected. Uh, so, uh, we all affected by, by you know general uh, recession and uh, as, as business, of course. So, um, even like if you take, for example, the recent Celsius event, let, let's call it like that. Of course, we have received uh, received a lot of uh, uh, activities, mostly in regards to crypto withdrawals. So. 
uh, that's fine. It was some kind of uh, a stress test, and we have successfully passed the, the stress test. So uh, a lot of you know panicking on the market, of course. Uh, a lot of uh, you know fat, right? Uh, this uh, another modern uh, slang word. Uh, but I think uh, it's uh, um, it's like always. Uh, crisis is a is a time of opportunity. So, and for us, it's a nice time of opportunity. And for us, it's a nice time to prove. Uh, that everything is like up and running. We have a sustainable business model. We have um, uh, proper uh, risk management. And uh, for us, it's just another investment into credibility and trust. So, Right. Well, that's great. And so I love to see the optimism, even though we are in crypto winter. A lot of the space is very optimistic. A lot of people find it as an opportunity to buy. So that's great. Um, I'm going to take a question from the audience because, like I said, we're getting a lot coming in, which is great. Uh, Raw Blitz is asking, hi, Ilya. My question is, what strategies does UHODLer use to give UHODLer users these fixed high APY percentages? Thank you. Loving the platform. Yeah, thank you for this question. Actually, it's, it's the most common question, as you can see from the chat. So, look, let, let's let's speak about our business model. Uh, as I said, we are uh, very different to many other companies. We are very different to crypto hedge funds. So, uh, we have four main groups of our uh, product products. So, the first one is about exchange. The second one is about um, uh, crypto back lending. The third one is about trading, and and number four is about uh, crypto interest accounts or crypto yield or or crypto rewards. So, the first three. Uh, are about revenue generating for us. So uh, we are generating our revenues from the first three group of products. The fourth one is about like costs, basically. So instead of paying to to Google and Facebook, we decided to pay to 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 our users. So actually, everything is very simple. So we generate our revenues and we pay back uh, to our users. So as for the revenue generating uh, products, again, uh, we have our commissions uh, on exchange, we have our commissions uh, on trading, we have crypto back lending solutions. Uh, but again, when we speak about crypto back lending, we're speaking about collateralized on uh, loans only with, uh, with um, uh, um, uh, dairy, let's say, efficient low-to-value rations. Uh, as I said, we are retail-focused, so no any uh, third-party loans to anyone. Uh, again, everything is generating inside the platform, and then we are sharing a uh, significant part of our revenues with our users. By the way, we are improving our stat page on our website. Uh, so if you go to our website and find uh, the page with, with our stats, you will see a number of figures, including a uh, chart where we started to share the total amount of revenues versus the total amount of payouts to our user, users. So uh, yes, uh, we can say that our rates for some coins are pretty much high, but keep in mind that we have limits. So uh, our risk and compliance team uh, always uh, keep an eye on, on the efficiency and balancing in our portfolio. So uh, some of you know that, that uh, uh, before, let's say the current you know changes on the market, uh, we had a default limit up to 100k per user default limit. Now we have 25k per user by default, and, and we can increase this limit uh, in connection with uh, customer activities on the platform. So long story short, uh, we welcome active hodlers. Uh, we generate revenue and we pay back uh, revenue to to our users instead of paying to someone else. Everything is uh, generated inside the platform. So uh, maybe just to illustrate it a bit better, uh, it's something like cashback, but not like a traditional cashback where you as a customer to someone getting a part of commissions you paid to, to the service provider. Because we are generating revenue from, from all our products and from, from all our user, uh, user base, and we pay it to, uh, to the uh, entire user base. Uh, some of our users are more active and they are generating more uh, revenues, some of them more passive. But uh, as for default uh, rates and default limits, they're the same for, for, for everyone. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Right. I'm also going to take another question that kind of is uh, associated with that question from Lark's Heat On. He's asking, are those APYs sustainable? 
Thank you. Um, so, Ilya, if you can just explain that a little bit, that would be good. Uh, look, again, uh, it's not like we take your funds and, uh, and place them uh, under someone else management. So we never used protocols like Ancor. We never used any other uh, DeFi or even CeFi protocols. So everything is managed inside our platform. So that means that we do not have third party risk. From that perspective, our rates are sustainable because, again, we generate our revenue in-house and we share part of this revenue with our user base. So uh, everything is manageable. In terms of sustainability for the long term, uh, it depends on the market. Uh, it depends on the user activities on the platform. Uh, so no surprises uh, during the, 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 you know, the current and the... Uh, uh, so during the, the current crisis, uh, most likely we will need to reduce rates for some coins. So our finance team is currently working on, on uh, they're always working on, on this balancing and, and uh, analysis. So most likely we will adjust uh, slightly some rates for, for some coins. But again, it's nothing about sustainability because it's not about revenues coming from third parties. It's about uh, yield and revenue generated uh, inside the platform. Got it. Wonderful. Um... Ilya, let's talk a little bit more about the features of uHodler. Um, so, for instance, staking, things like that. If you want to go into some detail there, that would be good. Yeah, again, so uh, we are like a combination of, of uh, uh, let's say, I can say traditional crypto platform with a trading platform. So we have a number of products for passive uh, hodlers and we have a number of products for active hodlers. So as for passive, of course, we can we, 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 we again can speak about interest uh, accounts uh, or we can speak about simple products like buy crypto or sell crypto or or swap from one crypto to another crypto. Uh, so uh, then uh, as for passive hodling, we have uh, crypto back lending solutions with two major target uh, audiences behind. So first of all, of course, we can speak about traditional use case where someone just need to, to get cash to pay his or her uh, regular bills and do not want to sell crypto at the same time. Uh, or we can speak about another case where um, uh, some active uh, uh, customers are using uh, crypto back lending solutions in order to, let's say, leverage their crypto in order to uh, to uh, benefit from prices uh, going up or down uh, by getting additional crypto to, to, to sell it or by getting additional fiat or stable coins uh, j just to buy more crypto and uh, hodl more crypto. So plus to this, we have, as I said, we have for active hodlers, we have a few trading products, multi-hodl and, uh, and uh, turbocharge. So... Uh, again, as I said, we welcome active hodlers, but at the same time, we have all needed products for for passive and conservative hodlers. And here, actually, is their their, their important point, uh, especially during the time of crisis and recession. So, uh, I personally big fan of strategies like 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 bubble strategy. I believe you know this strategy, uh, where uh, it's always better to to store uh, your uh, like. 70 or 80 percent of your funds uh, at highly liquid and low risk assets and it's always nice to play with the rest uh, to play meaning to 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 benefit uh, um, uh, from from market volatility so like uh, in theory uh, the ratio should be from 80 to 20 or from 70 to 30 like like the majority again with highly liquid and low risk assets and uh, the the small part should be invested in, in in something new so and again we have products for both sides if you'd like to just to stay passive you can simply hodl it uh, or simply convert it uh, if you'd like to play uh, so yeah we have this product uh, yeah great wonderful thanks Ilya um, and, you know, we're getting a lot of questions from the audience and Ilya, you're obviously extremely brave to do this AMA today, given <laughs> the recent events, but I'm really happy to hear um, the optimism here. So let's talk a little bit about Web3 because that space is evolving quite quickly. And I'm just curious to know how you, Hodler, is developing and advancing as the Web3 space evolves. Are there any features yes. that are accommodating? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. So uh, actually, we have started from building bridges between fiat and crypto. Uh, so and now we have uh, all major points and tokens integrated into the platform. On one hand, on the other hand, we have a number of fiat currencies integrated with a number of fiat payment solutions. So this bridge between crypto and fiat already built and integrated into the platform. So now we are focusing on building a bridge between DeFi and CeFi. But again, I'm not speaking about like using uh, of customer funds uh, by staking somewhere else on DeFi protocols. I'm speaking about uh, uh, a, a bridge, uh, meaning uh, we try to integrate some additional products with simplified access to DeFi uh, from inside our platform. Uh, we all know that um, it's not like something easy for just regular person uh, uh, to to uh get familiar with uh, all the features of different DeFi protocols uh and uh it would be really nice to have something simplified and something easy to understand and something with uh, uh you know some kind of responsibility behind uh inside uh platforms like like you holder like i said in the beginning so uh, we can speak about the combination of different worlds like uh traditional finance, crypto finance, or traditional crypto and trading, something like that. So uh, by uh, integrating some DeFi features into the platform, I think we are making another step forward into Web3. Uh, and um, uh, basically, I think, you know, we have one bold trend. So I'm not speaking again uh, about crisis and, uh, and recession. So it, it, I think it's something more positive. Like uh, we all uh, witness a, a transition from uh, private storages to cloud storages, right? Now we all like 99% cloud-based, right? So uh, I believe that in a few years from now, we all will be blockchain-based in terms of storage of data, in terms of digital identities, in, term, in terms of different kind of services. And we as a uh, digital asset service provider or some kind of uh, digital uh, neo crypto to fiat bank, we have to follow, right? That's why we have to be prepared with integrated uh, DeFi services, with integrated um, features that will help people to live and benefit from this, this decentralized world. But again, it's some kind of a strategy and we invest a lot into infrastructure, into the infrastructure and in, into our product developments. Uh, but as for short term, term uh, during the next um, actually a few weeks, I think sometime in July, we will implement uh, the very, very first uh, DeFi product, uh, which will be secure and easy to use with no any relations to, uh, to again, staking uh, or pooling or whatever with, uh, with the third parties. Uh, so, yeah, but good question. So maybe we can even speak about Web5 uh, following the recent publication from Jack. <laughs> right, yes, eventually. Um, and then I wanted to ask you, Ilya, where um, where does you hodler operate? Which regions and jurisdictions? Because I know you said not in the United States. So is it mainly in Europe? Yeah, mainly in Europe. In Europe, like uh, uh, I would say, like seventy percent of our customer base uh, uh, from from uh, uh, different European regions, uh, mostly Europe. Uh, all the rest comes from different regions except uh, the US. Uh, so we never targeted uh, the US, and actually we don't have US on our roadmap for the next, I would say, couple of years at least. So uh, the rest uh, comes from some Asian countries, uh, from Latin America partially, from uh, some African countries, but still 70% uh, Europe. Got it. And just out of curiosity, why uh, is the U.S. not on the roadmap for you know the next few years or so? Is it just because the regulations here? Actually, or... uh, it's a very good question because... Yeah, it's a very good question. So we have very conservative risk management approach, very conservative. Uh, and I'm speaking about different sides of risk management. So it's conservative in regards to uh, the management of our balance sheet. And uh, it is conservative in regards to our legal strategy and compliance. So uh, in order to target US customers, you have to be properly regulated. Uh, I know that some of uh, uh, crypto enthusiasts, I mean, crypto entrepreneurs, started to target the US, uh, you know, following the crypto hype uh, in 2017. 
And now some of them are getting a lot of issues, right? With uh, issues with SAC and other uh, other kind of um, uh, regulators and regulations. So initially, uh, and from the beginning, we had a very conservative approach, and we still have this conservative approach. We will enter. Uh, the yes only after relevant preparations with relevant paperwork, uh, with uh, on, only after establishing uh, physical substance with um, um, so with basically all the pieces needed to, to start the business. Until then, we are fully focused on on, on Europe. Especially because, um, unfortunately, uh, I, I think we can speak about that now. Uh, like crypto, and not just crypto, financial market operates globally, but regulated locally. So even uh, even even um, uh, inside Europe, uh, regulation is still very fragmented, right? So we are waiting for implementation of Mika, which is some kind of a general framework for European Union to regulate um, to regulate uh, crypto space. Uh, but we're still waiting uh, uh, up until um, this regulation will be implemented and it, uh, will come into force. We have to follow a number of local requirements. So, so we have to apply for a number of different licenses in different markets, in different regions. Uh, it's time consuming, it's uh, costly, and uh, so. We, but, but we have to do it. And we are doing that. So now we have we all, we are already like a regulated financial institution, um, but uh, in, additionally we have to open new branches, apply for new licenses, and uh, again until we finish everything in regards to Europe, until we build uh, a solid basis, properly regulated in every market of our presence, we will not go to the yes. So. Yes. Great. Well, wonderful. That that was a wonderful answer. And obviously, it's extremely important for platforms to comply with regulations and to ensure that's an order before supporting, you know, um, the product in any any jurisdiction. But just based on that, I think this is a good question from the audience that we can kind of um, that relates to that. Default one, two, three, four is asking, what is you hodler's relationship with traditional banks in general? Do you hold part of liquidity and instruments such as bonds? Can you offer more information in regards to that? Yeah, ex excellent question. So, uh, look, we are, again, building bridges between traditional and crypto, DeFi and CeFi. That being said, uh, we have uh, all relevant integrations with uh, a number of uh, crypto service providers. So we are integrated with all major exchanges like Kraken, Binance, uh, Hobby, Coinbase, OKEx, so some number. Of course, we have some integrations with, with uh, DeFi protocols like Uniswap. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, we have integrations with a number of different banks in different regions, of course, mostly in Europe, uh, with um, different kind of uh, payment infrastructures. But uh, speaking about both sides, crypto and fiat, we need it only in order to access liquidity. So nothing about uh, taking uh, some bonds on our balance sheet, nothing about uh, staking with crypto or buying some, some securities from, from, from banks. So uh, again, long story short, we need banks in order to provide you guys uh, as our customers with access to fiat. Uh, so, and we need integrations with the crypto exchanges in order to perform all uh, conversion operations uh, and in order to manage uh, our FX positions. So simple like that. Yeah. So Ilya, I'm curious to know right now with the whole Celsius crisis happening, um, a lot of people are saying not your keys, not your crypto. I want to get your take on that. And then I also want to hear how you hodler guarantees security on the platform. Yeah, it's a very, very important, very, very big question. So, uh, again, let's start from uh, the risk management. Uh, and by the way, I can see a question about my background in the chat. So, uh, our background as, as founders uh, of UHODLER is mostly uh, from uh, traditional finance. So, uh, we have like around 20 years of experience working for, for banks and for uh, online trading with uh, different financial assets. So, uh, of course, we have uh, blockchain background, but blockchain background is not like something that you could collect during the last 20 years. So mostly, uh, again, we're speaking about traditional finance, banking and, and trading. Uh, and uh, having our experience with traditional finance, 
and again witnessing a number of crises. So I'm not, maybe I'm not too old, but unfortunately I'm not too young. Young, and I, I still remember the case with, uh, with the Lehman Brothers. Brothers. So and uh, just having this kind of experience in the past, past uh, we care about our funds, we care about our balance sheet, and we care about our customer funds. So that's why we we, we pay great attention to risk management in general. We do not again uh, take a third party risks. Uh, uh, speaking about uh, placing uh, any kind of investments um, under um, you know, third party service providers, we're self efficient. So uh, then speaking about uh, uh security uh, uh i think it's important important to speak about uh custody so uh, our custody is organized um uh with the, some number of layers of of security and number of um, so basically we have quite a complex structure of our of our custody as a core we use our own solution uh um uh, plus to this we have integrated two solutions uh from ledger enterprise and we are very happy with uh, their solution and fireblock solution uh, as an additional pieces of our custody and additional layers of security so plus to this as i already said we already have uh, a number of bank accounts uh, in order to to um uh, have cash there uh and to to have a liquidity in order to uh, execute all all, all uh, relevant operations. So, and of course, we have some number of uh, uh, crypto service providers integrated. Uh, integrated, but again, we need them in order to perform all all relevant operations. The key principle is that uh, we always have enough liquidity and highly liquid assets, basically in cash, in order to to cover all obligations, all liabilities. So, with the balance sheet is is uh, just all the time healthy, uh, because again, we do not lock funds somewhere uh, outside of, of, of the platform. So then uh, uh, speaking about security, um, so uh, actually we invest a lot in, in, uh, into you know uh, the, the topic. So we perform uh, pen testing of our platform and all the services at least once a quarter. So, uh, and don't ask me why, why we don't publish the, the, the results of our pen testing. Uh, so, uh, because we just, if we find something, we, we immediately, we instantly improve it. So, uh, what else? Uh, um, uh, we, uh, of course, we are subject to a number of audits, uh, mostly related actually to KYC and IML requirements. And actually, we invest a lot in our compliance system in order to, on one hand, to be fully compliant with all global and local regulations, and on the other hand, to be still easy to use uh, to our customers. And uh, I understand that for, for some of uh, users, uh, compliance could be a boring topic, but, but in reality, it's not, because uh, if you as a service provider follow all regulatory requirements in terms of compliance and, and IML, you're protected uh, in terms of uh, you are additionally protected from, from potential hacks, from potential, potential uh, illicit activities or from potential ban uh, that could come from, from some regulators. I can give you an example, like just to avoid blaming anyone. Uh, but many of you guys, be uh, I believe, remember a case with one of the European and very big uh, payment provider, right? They were not 100% compliant with local regulations at the market of their presence, and they got banned uh, by, by local regulator for three years. And many, many customers just stuck waiting uh, for their cash out of uh, the system of this payment provider. So in order to avoid this kind of, uh, this kind of situation, uh, we do our best in order to invest in uh, KYC and AML in order to be compliant. But again, as I said, easy to use for for just uh, users, uh, our lovely yeah. users. Right. Um, Ilya, do you think that, I think, and I'm reading this a lot now as well and seeing, you know, there's more awareness with people maybe wanting to switch over to hardware wallets given the recent events that we've been witnessing in the crypto industry. Do you think that's going to impact you HODLer at all? Or, you know, does that, you know, what are your no, thoughts no. on that? Uh, actually, uh, um, no. so I like uh, hardware world wallets. Uh, I have my personal hardware wallets as well. Uh, by the way, we are partnering with Ledger. 
So uh, as I said, we are using their Ledger enterprise solution for our custody, but at the same time, uh, we use Ledger Nano devices. We even have a set of Ledger Nano branded, branded nano, nano devices, and we fully welcome users who uh, use both ways, uh, online, offline, uh, because actually it's a right way to manage your assets. Again, it's something like this bar bar barbell strategy. You should store the majority of funds in a secure way, uh, with highly liquid assets, low risk, and you should use the rest. So, but again, keep in mind that nothing new, so nothing new with crypto. We we have experienced this uh, many times in the past on the traditional market. Like we we all use banks. Uh, we can be happy with that, we can be not, but an alternative to banks, uh, if we forget for a second about crypto, is cash. How good is to, to have cash uh, at your apartment, to your kitchen? Of course, it will be safe until someone will, uh, you know, steal it somehow. Uh, but money should work, right? Money should make money. It's just a main principle for, for money management. So that's why it's better to distribute it. Like it's better to use part of your funds at cold storage, hardware wallet. But still, uh, it's better to use another part uh, operating on the market. And by the way, speaking about building bridges, uh, this is not for short-term roadmap. But we have it, uh, uh, um, I think, uh, I think it's more about like midterm roadmap. We will integrate uh, an, um, a connection between hardware wallets and our um, platform, our application, just to simplify access from your Yehoder wallet, online Yehoder wallet, mobile or web, web one, with your hardware device, just to simplify an access both ways. So, and uh, plus to this, we are uh, working on an integration from other side, from hardware device. So yeah, it's something, uh, some, something to, to come. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I love that answer. I think it's a great answer. Um, makes a lot of sense in my mind. Um, Ilya, I know that there are, well, actually in the audience, Max Petner is asking credit card. And I was going to ask you that as well. Are there plans to release some sort of a credit card associated with you, Hodler? Yes. Uh, short answer, yes. Uh, and uh, so basically, you know, uh, we already have like 90, maybe 80% of everything needed in order to operate like a new kind of crypto to fiat bank so but as you know that the, the the last mile is always like the most complicated the most difficult so uh but we are we are going into this direction and yes we have uh, uh credit cards on our roadmap for the short and midterm it will be organized in partnership with uh, some of our trusted service providers payment pro providers for the long term perspective i think we will uh, we will um, uh, offer it in a more like natural way into the platform. But again, long story short, short answer is yes. Great. Um, I'm going to take another question from the audience and, and keep those questions coming our way. These are very good. Um, Alex Tzm is asking: All businesses have weaknesses or improvements that need to be, you know, improved. What is Uhodler's weakness that needs improving? And I think that's a great question because obviously no business is perfect, right? So Ilya, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Great question. So since the beginning, we were always focused on efficiency. So uh, we are not ICO backed. So meaning we didn't paste a lot of money uh, into, you know, initial uh, launch of, uh, of the platform, initial, uh, you know, marketing campaigns and all that stuff. So our strategy was always uh, very conservative. Uh, uh, we were always moving uh, step by step very accurately with everything. So on one side, this is good. And uh, because of that, we are very sustainable. Uh, but on the other side, of course, it also raised some, some weaknesses. Like, for example, of course, we're, we're not that big like some other companies who started from like 50 million ICO, right? So we still need to promote ourselves more. We still need to get into uh, some new markets. So uh, basically the first point I think is about marketing. So the second point uh, is about regulation, but this is not about weaknesses actually. This is about challenges. Because again, uh, as I said, we are already a regulated financial institution. 
Uh, so, um, but in order to operate um, uh, not just globally, even even inside Europe, we have to apply for many different licenses. Uh, like uh, currently, what do we have? We have Switzerland, and we have our uh, head office in Switzerland, and we are regulated financial intermediary. We are regulated pawn broker, so we are crypto asset service provider in Cyprus. But uh, so we also uh, in the process of applying for some additional licenses uh, to maybe provide you with some secrets. <laughs> Actually, it's not a big secret. So we just recently opened our uh, branch in France, in Paris. So uh, we uh, have uh, hired some teammates, actually excellent teammates, very well experienced. So, and now we are in the active phase of our application for Sun license in France. So we have pretty much similar process in Italy. Uh, so uh, we have uh, pretty much similar process in Spain and in some other countries as well. Again, it's not like about Witness, uh, weaknesses, it, it's more like about challenges. And um, even uh, if we again will speak about a crisis, I think crisis is just again a time of opportunity. And the, those ones who will keep investing into the infrastructure will win the market after you know the crisis. So our plan is to keep investing into infrastructure in terms of legal structure, in terms of technology, in terms of our team, uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, and maybe one more point, uh, I just mentioned that, that we keep investing in, into the infrastructure. Again, it's not like about weaknesses, again, it's about challenges. So, uh, we're getting more and more load to our systems, that's why we always need to upgrade our systems, right? Uh, because now we are already speaking about, like, uh, millions of people, mi millions of operations, uh, billions of, of uh, you know, volumes. So we uh, constantly need to improve and upgrade all our systems. By the way, guys, for this night, I think uh, we will plan some maintenance for, for a short period of time just to upgrade our systems. So again, it's just a challenge. So we, we, we should to keep investing into everything, infrastructure, legal structure, technology, and people. And we do that. Yeah, wonderful. Well, those are great updates. I'm also wondering, Ilya, so you mentioned that there is um, a potential credit card coming soon. Are there any other features you can talk about? For instance, um, you know, customer support or anything else that you are planning, that you hodlers planning to implement moving forward? Yeah, before answering the question, uh, and thank you for this reminder. Uh, Rachel, I'd like to say big, big thank you to our customer support and our tech support and our finance team because they are doing a great job. Can you imagine after the Celsius event, we got like enormous amount of requests for customer support, finance team uh, everywhere. So people got scary, right? But our customer support, uh, you know, did a perfect job. So thank you guys. You're the best. So keep it up. Uh, and of course, we will keep investing into our team, of course, for sure. So um, as for product features, uh, again, but I think I, I have already disclosed some, 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 some uh, features. So new branches, new markets, uh, new languages, uh, new uh, security features, by the way. So we're constantly upgrading our system in terms of uh, security features. Uh, like, for example, in a few weeks, uh, you will see some interesting anti-phishing uh, uh, tools uh, and not only anti-phishing tools. So uh, I have already disclosed one DeFi-related product uh, coming during the next few weeks. So, um, and uh, as I said, we are investing a lot into our stability. By the way, I can see in the chat question in regards to 14th of June. Uh, sometime uh, something happened during the night. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a good example. We got an issue, hardware issue, with one of our hosting providers during the night. Uh, so, and that caused some delays in the execution. So, we have to improve it, and we invest a lot in, in this uh, infrastructure. And uh, so, uh, this will be uh, more stable. Uh, so, this part. Yeah, actually, a lot, a lot of things. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'll just read a, a comment because it's very positive. Kurt Love says, you got this. 
I agree. Um, like I said, you know, we are in a in crypto winter. We're in a bear market. And Ilya, you just are answering these questions and you're so optimistic about everything, which is great because, you know, bear markets, you know, I guess, you know, what I'm reading and what I think, it, it, it's a great opportunity actually to build and to buy. It's a great opportunity and actually no surprises, nothing new. It's just another cycle. Crypto is a part of much, much bigger, much bigger market. Uh, uh, crypto market already proved its resilience. Uh, so uh, market just becoming mature, just becoming stronger, healthier. And uh, yeah, so it's just another cycle. Guys, stay strong and uh, yeah, everything right. will be okay. Right. This is actually a great question that just came in and keep keep com- keep the questions coming. We do have a few minutes. Um, Sipo K is asking, do you have investment packages for people with no significant knowledge in crypto investments? Uh, great question, but unfortunately, my answer is no. So, as I said, in order to be successful, we have to focus on one significant feature at one single uh, moment of time, right? So, we have too many of things to be implemented. Uh, speaking about this uh, educational content uh, and uh, uh, support for newbies, um, I think it's something to be developed in the future. But at the same time, I think our main contribution to this topic is that since the beginning, we are building a platform which is easy to use for just regular people, not for crypto geeks. So you hodler is not for crypto geeks. You hodler is for normal people, regular people, easy to use. <laughs> but yes, I think it's something to 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 consider and maybe add in the future into our product yeah. offerings. Ease of use is so important for the mainstream and non-crypto natives. So I appreciate hearing that. That's extremely important. I'm going to take probably just one more question, maybe two. Raw Blitz is asking, will you hodler buy Bitcoin and keep it long term on their balance sheet? No. No, actually, we are very conservative, guys. Again and again, uh, we are conservative with every single piece of this big puzzle. Uh, so uh, we have some strong uh, treasury rules. So we have uh, some limits for every single coin. So speaking about our own funds on our treasury. So if we go below the limit, we buy. If we go above the limit, we sell. So and limits are pretty much conservative. And again, that's why we are stable. Just to maybe to, to sum up, we do not risk customer funds. We do not stake them externally we do not lock them on DeFi or under a third party financial institutions at the same time we have conservative approach in regards to our own balance sheet we are not like uh, michael saylor uh so uh we are very conservative again limits ups and downs just um we play with these limits great okay i have time for one more question then we we will actually have to end the AMA, but Ilya, you've been great so far. Um, Sebastian is asking, what were the beginning of, of you, Hodler? So maybe when was it launched? What was your first minimum viable product? And how did you get people interested in it? Great question. And I have two answers. So the, the, the first answer is that we have started from crypto back lending solution. So we had created, created initially one simple product, uh, crypto back loan. Uh, so and it was right after right after an ICO hype, uh, where people just uh, got a lot of crypto and many people uh, did not want to sell it. So and we just simply offered one simple product, simple, uh, very flat crypto back lending solution, and uh, we got like like a proof from 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 the market. So. And then we started our development. So we have reached our break even. Just again to, to, to give you a timeline. So we have started the development in 2017. The first onboarded customer we got uh, on November 2018. We got our break even in June 2020, and we keep growing like step by step. So uh, and everything is started um, from from crypto back lending solution. But the second answer, which is much more romantic, uh, is that. Right before you hodler, we had another project about tokenization of human intelligence. So the idea was about tokenization of human obligations, human ideas, and uh, uh, a lot of different things. 
uh, it was a very romantic project. Uh, thanks to this project, we have built a core of our team and actually we have built a set of smart contracts and we have used one of them to create actually crypto back lending solution. Uh, so it's a long story, very romantic story. I will be happy to tell you more sometime in the future, but just keep in mind that tokenization of human intelligence pretty much connected to the idea of web, even not web three, web five. And we have something on our, you know, backpack <laughs> cool well Ilya, thank you unfortunately we're out of time and i know we have a lot of questions from the audience Ilya, if uh, audience members want to reach out to you and and ask their questions how anytime. can they do that anytime so um i think the easiest way is just to submit them uh to our customer support chat uh we will answer everything Plus to this, we have Twitter. Uh, so basically, we have all major social social networks. Simply uh, submit your question there, and our marketing and support team will do our best in order to provide you with uh, with the answers. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you again, Ilya. You have been great. Uh, you've answered a lot of really important questions, especially considering market conditions today. Um, audience, thank you guys so much for being so interactive with us. We really appreciate it. And just to reminder, um, just a reminder, please subscribe to our YouTube. We will do more of these wonderful AMAs moving forward. So thanks again to everyone, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you, Rachel, and th thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.